<laughs> I'm Laurel Nimi. I'm the author of The Elephant's New Shoe, and I've written um, some other books as well, including Animal Investigators and Orangutan Houdini. And I also write for National Geographic and some other outlets. All right. Thank you for uh, joining us, Laurel. So um, The Elephant's New Shoe uh, tells the story of an elephant uh, in Cambodia named Chuk, uh, who is severely injured and with the help of many people is able to walk again. Um, it's an incredible story. How did you come to this story? And then how did you decide that you wanted to make it into a book? And how did that process work out? Yeah, so I first met the rescuer of Chuck, Nick Marks, about uh, 11 years ago, and it was shortly after my first book came out, Animal Investigators, which is about wildlife forensics and the illegal wildlife trade. And when I heard about Chuck, I think the story resonated with me for a number of ways. One of, one of which is he's only one of many animals rescued by Nick. But also because when I was younger, I broke my back and pelvis in a really bad accident. And so I think I related a lot to Chuck on a personal level as well, and um, probably would have really benefited from knowing his story and that he's okay when I spent months in the hospital. And so I felt like it was a good story to tell for a lot of reasons. Um, thank you. Yeah, and and as you mentioned earlier, um, you you mentioned the meaning of um, of Chuck's name. Can you could you say that again? Yeah. So Chuck is um, so he's a injured elephant who whose name means lotus, and in the Asian culture in Cambodia and elsewhere in Asia as well lotus flowers are symbols of overcoming hardship. And that's because they blossom and they come up through the mud and then bloom. And so Nick is always saying about Chook that Chook's, it was always Chook's fighting spirit that let him survive and to thrive. And so his name is sort of perfect for for him as an elephant. And he has a really, it, you know, it's a really tragic story because his, he was an orphaned elephant. His leg had get, gotten caught in a snare, which is like a wire trap and was injured very badly. And, um, and without that sort of fighting spirit, he probably would have died. And, and thankfully then he met Nick who also helped him a lot and gave him what he needed to also thrive. Yeah, thank you. Again, yeah, it's an incredible, incredible story um, and with so many elements of it. And there's, and there's also just a lot of positive messages in the book. Like you said, like, took the elephant just in overcoming everything, but also everyone involved. You mentioned Nick. Um, and then there are other organizations, other wildlife preservation organizations, and then also um, the team that helped to develop the prosthetic um, for Chuk. And there's, again, all of these incredible uh, pieces coming together for this one story, um, which I... And, and it's interesting because that theme, exactly what you're saying, is that it's really a team of dedicated people with ideas who think it's important to save this elephant. And, you know, why this one when so many maybe are being hurt or, um, well, because it matters. It matters to Chuck, it matters to the species, but there's, you see that around us here in Vermont. I mean, like you can point to wildlife rehabilitators like um, Craig Newman at Outreach for Earth Stewardship, who uh, rescues raptors and is every bit as amazing as Nick Marks in terms of dedication and just uh, that can-do, innovative spirit of doing what it takes. And in fact, I just published a piece in April on uh, 
on, it's called Life and Limbs on mongabay.com. And it's also on my website, laurelnimi.com. But it talks about uh, animal prosthetics and gives a lot of other examples of these teams of people who just have an idea and want to help. And they just try and try again and come up with a solution. And in that case, rescuing, you know, different birds and other animals as well. So it's, it's just that whatever it takes kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, I think that's the really great message of it. And it's, that has a certain like universality of it because it's, you know, it, uh, again, even though it takes place in the, the elephant is Cambodia, but there's people from all over who are involved in, in helping with the elephant. And just, again, just that story is, is sort of universal, that, that sort of those themes. Yeah, and I think a lot of times we, uh, you know, wherever you are, what we don't always realize is that, you know, even sitting here in Vermont, we can help elephants and, or we can help other species. Uh, and we all have that power. We all have some of Chuck's power or that team's power, whether it's writing letters or signing petitions or educating others, doing a project at school, talking over the dinner table to parents and trying to convince them, um, you know, talking to your friends. I mean, there's so many examples of kids themselves taking action for animals, from orangutans, uh, from Girl Scouts getting interested in what's in their Girl Scout cookies that they were selling and wanting to save orangutans and get palm oil more sustainable, which is cutting down the forest to make way for these oil palm plantations, to simply uh, Vermont kids who were instrumental in getting a law passed here in the state of Vermont to not allow the sales of animal parts, uh, endangered animal parts. Um, we all can do just different things simply by sharing stories. And I think that's one reason why I'm so excited about Elephant's New Shoe is because it's a simple story, but hopefully it gets kids interested in elephants and and other creatures as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree. And, and it's it's very simple, it's very easy, like relatable um, and a very, on a lot of levels. Um, uh, so thank you for sharing that. Um, so you've sort of already touched it, so I was going to I was going to go ahead and jump to this. So the the reading the summer reading theme this year is tales and tales like stories and animal tales. Mm -hmm. um, and as you've already touched on, you have you have a lot of books um, that about animals and specifically, as you mentioned, about you know uh, ways of 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 sort of highlighting. Um, ways to, to, for preservation of animals um, and conservation. Um, so what is, what, what draws you to animals and, and specifically to um, the, the sort of conservation elements of it? I mean, there's, you know, it's funny because ever since I was a little kid, I've always loved animals and all kinds of animals, you know, from fish to dogs to, a little less on bugs, but I've become really interested in dung beetles since I lived in uh, <laughs> Botswana. And, you know, it's just really interesting to observe them. I think when I was little, I wanted to be, you know, the next Jane Goodall. And so I think the more I learn about it, the more interested I get. And I think that's a true with anything really is sort of the more you learn about it. And I, I think I'm also drawn to to strange stories or, or weird facts as well. And, um, you know, like, did you know elephants have over 40,000 muscles in their trunks? Or that uh, baby yeah, elephants that, will yeah. suck their trunks uh, to comfort themselves? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah some of those I read I, in the back, a lot of those are in the back matter of the book. You know, um, And there were some that like, again, about the 40,000 muscles in the trunk, which is more, way more than in the entire human body. And it's, it is sort of like mind boggling. And it yeah, made me want it, to learn more too. It does. And, and to know that like an elephant can pick up a blade, a single blade of grass with their incredible. Trunk. Like it's, you know, it's incredible. Um, but we can do something they can't. Um, they can't jump. So. 
So you know, like the, the more you learn, the more you think, oh my gosh, it just sort of endears you to them in a different way. And whether it's elephants or a dung beetle, uh, which we have out in our field uh, in the country. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you know, it's just um, sort of once you look, start learning something about the animal, you get very interested. And so I've always just been drawn to it. And I think yeah. different kids have different passions, you know, whether it's tinkering with machines or whatnot, and to follow your passion because there's always um, happiness in that. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned uh, dung beetles and, and Vermont. Uh, what does living in Vermont, how, how does that inform uh, your writing? Um, I mean, I think we, we moved here after, actually, after living in uh, Botswana in Southern Africa. And in many ways to me, it's very similar because of the open space and the fresh air and also the fact of a lot of people who care about the land and sustaining the land and animals, and we are part of that. And it's all a system that sort of needs to work together. And so I think the fact that, you know, here in Vermont, people live off the land and, you know, agriculture is so important and we're not divorced from that land. Um, to me, that's really, it's just, um, I mean, I absolutely adore living here and I get a lot of ideas for books here. So you, cause you asked how it informs my writing. And I think one is it gives me just a personal piece, but also just you hear stories from a lot of people in the community or you know just sharing ideas with a lot of people who are interested in you know whether it's teachers librarians um rescue you know wildlife rehabilitators and ener energy efficiency is really big here so it all works together excellent um uh <clears throat> Do you want to tell us about anything that you are working on, any new projects, any new books, or any events or anything that you're excited about? And well, I've I've actually been writing a lot recently for National Geographic on oil exploration in uh, the Okavango region, which is, like I said, I used to live in Southern Africa and um, it's a really special place and the oil exploration is threatening the water resources there, and it's a very water scarce region. So that's one thing I've been doing a lot of. And I've also been contributing to National, uh, the New York Times Magazine for Kids, which has been really fun. Um, I've done a couple different listicles. One is how do animals show that they're happy? And another is how do animals uh, winterize themselves <laughs> and spend the winter? Yeah, and, that's great. You know, those are ideas you sort of get from just sitting out on my porch and watching animals around and it starts to lead you to questions. You know, what, what is, you know, I wonder if that raven sitting in the tree is happy. I wonder if those calls are happy or, you know, how can I yeah. tell? And sometimes you know, and sometimes you don't know. And so it starts you investigating and, and hopefully the summer program, the, you know, wild tales will get people thinking and, you know, what if, uh, or, you know, what next? Yeah. And that sort of leads into the to the next and, and our last question, which is basically, what advice do you have um, for young readers um, in general? But, you know, this summer, this has been a, a challenging year for um, many people and, and young people, especially um, with a lot of changes and a lot of unknown things. What advice would you have for, for young readers? For young readers is... Um you know, read books that make you happy. I mean, and if, if something resonates and you want to ask the author, like most authors will reply and they have websites and so send them an email. Um, maybe it will inspire you to write your own story, to take, uh, you know, take where the author left off, or maybe you'll want to, you know, it will inspire you to tell a story in the animal's voice, you know, what if, what if my dog could talk, or what if I had my dog's ears, or, um, you know, what if I could pounce like a cat, you know, the, that question of what if, you know, maybe you just start thinking, maybe you want to ask the author, maybe you want to ask your parent, or a teacher, or your friend, um, or, 
you know, just let it spur your imagination. Because I think reading, the thing about reading that I personally love is that it takes me to new places and makes me think in different ways, you know, maybe learn something new or maybe imagine something new um, that really makes me happy. And I think find that joy and just follow your, follow that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much, Laurel. We, we appreciate it. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thanks so much.